Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Full disclosure. The arbor is quiet, except for the splashing of gentle waves against the rocks. And of course, the morning air is split with the crowing of the roosters. They are simply entertaining, but resilient. They break the morning every day with their melodious sounds. Anyway, back to our business. Today, our title is Breaking News, Good News. Turn on your TV, turn on your radio, check the internet. You are going to want to hear this one. This is breaking news, hot as ever. You can't miss this. We're joining the outside broadcast team coming live from the temple in Jerusalem. There is this big debate going on, and the place is packed as people listen to this epic conversation between Jesus and the academic and religious elites of Israel. They have gathered to discount Jesus for who he says he is, that he is a son of God. That has been the biggest controversy in Jerusalem each time Jesus comes to Jerusalem. But this time, these guys are out for blood. They are barely being polite only because they want to maintain some respect among the people of the city. Let us join the hot debate that is going on even as we speak. Jesus is on the floor. We should tell you that it has been interesting as the crowds gather to listen. This kind of debate has been going on between Jesus and these learned men since he was 12 years old when his parents found their missing son in the temple debating with the academicians in Jerusalem. He's now 33 years old, or thereabout, and it has only got even more intense. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus has been consistent in his conversations with these guys. He's here to win people to his purpose for coming to earth. That is to redeem humans. Earlier in this debate, he spoke of himself as the light of the world. And the way he describes the scenario, you had to agree that he was making sense. I am the light of the world, he says. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8 and verse 12. Now we just heard him make another of such points. He presents himself not only as one who knows truth, but that he is truth. So what do you have to say to this argument that his truth will set people free? They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? These guys, they are steeped in their religious heritage and are not about to yield to this man from Nazareth who makes these claims that he is the son of God. No way. Jesus was equal to the debate because he is 100% certain that these learned men like you and me, that they need salvation. As he speaks, notice that he is responding to their arguments, but somehow he is also talking to a wider audience that includes you and me. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I'm telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you're doing what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you're looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. Did you get all of that? Since they introduced the concept of slave in the discussion, Jesus went there with full blast. He told them straight up that they are slaves. He's talking about you two, that every one of us is a slave to sin because we commit sins, big ones and the little ones that maybe no one knows about. But it is the next thing that he said that is epic. So if the son sets you free, 
you will be free indeed. That, my friend, is what Jesus is about. He came to the world to set you free. Now, I know you want to return to the debate, but I have to stop and say that that last comment cannot and should not be ignored. That is why Jesus came into the world, my friend, to set you free from the enslaved and destructive conditions in which Satan has held you and the whole human race. The Bible says that all of us have sinned and come short of the standards of God, Romans 3 and verse 23. And the only way out of that sinful state is by accepting Jesus as Savior. These learned men could not receive what Jesus had to say because they were tethered to their religious ideology that was passed down to them by their four parents. Jesus came to break the chains of sin that has held every human captive. He offers himself as the only one who can deliver. In fact, Sometime after this debate, he pointedly told his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John 14, verse 6. We have to interrupt this outside broadcast, this conversation, to return to our regular lives. But let me share some other points that Jesus made. You've heard people use this expression, the devil is a liar. Well, it was Jesus who made that clear in that conversation when he told these learned men that their real father was not Abraham because Abraham stood for righteousness. Their real father is the devil and he is the father of lies. We're not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Can any one of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever believes belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Wow, that's telling it like it is. We have to stop here, but listen to me well. If you are not a Christian, then you are a follower of Satan, the father of lies, and you are not free. I know that you don't want to be identified with such a character, and I know that you do not want to be enslaved in sin. So consider, therefore, the alternative that Jesus presents. Let him set you free, and I promise you, my friend, you will be free indeed.